So in this wonderful video, we're going to look at how to do a more complicated limiting reactant problem. Okay, how to go from grams of a reactant and figure out how many grams of a product you make. Yay. Okay, so limiting reactant. Okay, not too terrible. The, the general idea of limiting reactant is you are going to run out of one of your reactants. You need to figure out always two things, right? There's always two things you need to figure out with a limiting reactant problem. Number one, how much product can I make? Number two, which reactant is limiting? What did I run out of? Always the two things you're trying to find. And now we're going to look at an example that's much more common. Okay, we're going to look at gram to gram. Because this is what would happen in lab, right? In, in real labs, in a chem lab, you go and you have a reactant that you're going to do some kind of chemical experiment with. You walk over to the scale and you mass it. So you have some amount of grams of your reactant. And then a chemical reaction happens. And then you have a product. And you walk back over to the scale and you mass it. And you have some amount of mass of your product. So almost always in lab, you're going to be doing your limiting reactant problems converting gram to gram, okay? So I think it's important that you actually see an example of doing a gram to gram problem. Okay, so the problem is if you have 20 grams of nitrogen reacting with 20 grams of hydrogen, how many grams of ammonia will actually be produced, okay? So good rule of thumb for your limiting reactant problems is however many reactants there are is how many problems you're going to have to do. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a problem, a stoic problem for nitrogen, and I'm going to have to do a stoic problem for hydrogen. Okay, so two problems. All right, and then I just do it like any other stoic problem. All right, so I balance my reaction first. All right, I always balance my reaction. So three of these for two of these, one of those. Okay, and then I start with my given. So We'll do nitrogen first. 20 grams of nitrogen. I need to convert out of grams of nitrogen and into moles of nitrogen. So I use my molar mass. Each nitrogen is 14.01, so this is 28.02 grams for every one mole. Okay, now I use my mole ratio, so I'm gonna go from nitrogen into ammonia. So get out of moles of N2, get into moles of NH3, and this is a 1 to 2. You just use your balance coefficients. And then NH3, you need to get grams, right? It's asking for grams of NH3. So now I need to actually find grams of NH3. And to do that, I use molar mass again. So one nitrogen, three hydrogens is going to be 17.04 grams. Let's squish that in, okay? And then, boop, 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 in your calculator, and you get an answer of 24.3 grams of NH3. Well, I'm not done yet, right? I've only done half of my limiting reactant problem. Now I do the exact same thing for hydrogen. Yay! So I start with my given of two grams of hydrogen. I need to get out of grams of hydrogen, get into moles of hydrogen. Two hydrogens means 2.02 .02 grams for every one mole. Okay, now I'm in moles. Get out of moles of hydrogen get into moles of what I want. I'm looking for ammonia, NH3. Okay, use your mole ratio here. So in this case, use your balance coefficients, three moles of H2 for every two moles of NH3, okay? And then NH3, get out of moles of NH3 and get into grams of NH3. This is the nice step of limiting reactive problems because you've already solved for your molar mass. Okay, so okay, so this will be 17.04 grams for every one mole. And plug it in your calculator. 
and you get 11.2 grams. Okay, so my question is how many grams of NH3 are actually produced? Of my possibilities, 24.3 or 11.2? Okay, this is limiting reactant. So I'm limited. I pick the smaller number. Chemistry golf, baby. Okay, smaller number wins. So this is my answer. Please make sure that when you are doing these kinds of questions, okay, on a quiz or a test, if we ever get back to campus, all right, that you don't just leave it blank. You have to box the correct answer. If you just left both these answers, I don't know if you know which one it is. Is it 24.3? Is it 11.2? Is it a number in the middle? Okay, make sure you box the correct answer, which is always going to be the smaller one. And then you can identify H2 is my limiting reactant. N2 is going to be my excess reactant. Okay? Hopefully not too bad.